Ony is a very nice fellow from the outlook. He told me, you know, I'm going to die like him. Very persuasive and very sharp. In the early 1990s, Northern Uganda was in the throes of conflict. During one of the longest insurgencies in Africa, Konyi's acolytes continued to kill, mime and abduct. False information upon abduction during the war was a common survival strategy that a choli parents taught their children. They Lare keep records of the names, clans and village of birth of those they abduct. This is supposed to instill fear amongst those that made escape. In turn, their families would be targeted. According to accounts, Dominic Ongwen was abducted in the early 1990s. He was so small and frail that he had to be carried for the first few days by other captives. With a distinguished role at the treacherous battlefront, Ongwen gained the notoriety as one of the most daring and ruthless commanders of the LRA. There's a, there's a crossfire, there's a war in, in, in Sudan called Pajok. And there's a war in Sudan called Pajok. Then that war, the Dinkas, Dinkas soldiers, was laying ambush for almost one full man. So Dominic Nguyen and uh, the one called Chaela Guerra, so was there as a, a big command. So they order to kill, I don't know how to call, to kill uh, the whole living thing, I would say like that, the whole living thing, whether children, whether woman, whether uh, insects, whether cow, whatever. They kill because was killed one of our command called Uchaela Guerra. He's a big command, by the way. In 2005, alongside Kony, Vicente Tio, Koto Diamba, and Rascal Ukuya, he was indicted by the International Criminal Court for war crimes and crimes against humanity. On a recent visit to Uganda, I asked the president of the Assembly of State Parties of the ICC why Ongwen, a victim of abduction, was indicted. And this was her response. I asked this question. And uh, I have to say, I don't know. There is a variance of opinion of whether Ongwen should be indicted or not. During the Juba peace talks, you might recall that Dominic Ongwen was still in northern Uganda, even when all his other colleagues had crossed into DRC. He was given an opportunity to leave the rebellion and join the peace process. He refused. He crossed into DRC and refused to repent. So he took so many bad decisions, including killing civilians. When you get a person at the age of 10 and you keep him in the bush, you keep him and teach him the art of killing, the art of remorselessness, you, you, you know, he turns into an animal. So is he responsible for the change of heart? Is he responsible? So I find a lot of conflict in my mind about what I would do with a man like Dominic Nguyen. Now, they all killed, but, and they were all abducted. Uh, and they all had the choice to be as brutal as Nguyen, but he went to another level. Through a number of correspondences, we are able to trace Dominic Nguyen's birthplace in Gulu. An old man who knew his brother's place volunteered to take us there. But he stopped by the roadside, fearing to be seen with us. Finally, we met Ongwen's brother and uncle. After exchanging pleasantries, Ongwen's brother opens up about his sibling. They say they will be so, so grateful, thankful to God when the government ac accepted Dominic to come back home. They will be so, so, so grateful. And he'll be so grateful because if he comes, he will be so released because he's now the one heading the family, running out and there. He's the only one left. He also reveals to us the torment his family has been through after Nguyen joined the LRA. The family wasn't in good time with the government. 
uh, especially the UPDF, because any group of soldiers of just pass around there, they will just say, it's Dominic, it's Dominic, it's Dominic, it's Dominic, it's Dominic, all the time. Dominic Ongwen could be in the Central African Republic, but amongst the local community here in Paibona, where he was born, his name still evokes fear. According to several accounts, Ongwen was reportedly keen in character and eager to please Kony. His former colleagues who were abducted with him relayed numerous stories of Ongwen as a child soldier successfully conducting raids on military installations. He also organized many attacks against enemy rebel groups like the SPLA. These attacks were brutal, employing powerful symbolic messaging such as the LRA practice of lining roads with severed heads of their enemies. According to some accounts, Kony always praised Ongwen's character, calling him a role model for other abducted children. Ongwen was promoted at such a rapid pace for three reasons. First, he was a brutal killer. Second, he was a loyal fighter. And third, he managed to outlive his superiors. Kony's coterie of commanders like Tolbert Nyeko, Okelo Matata, Charles Tabule, Rascal Ukwia and others had been killed, paving way for Ongwen's raise in rank. Former abductees portray Ongwen as a conflicted man. Some say he was empathetic and unable to control his immediate circumstances. Alongside reports of Ongwen's humanity and compassion, other accounts portray him as a ruthless man. Both sets of narratives reveal that Ongwen navigated a complex terrain to survive in the brutal jungle. Today he remains holed up in the jungles, crisscrossing South Sudan, the Central African Republic and the DRC. Kony is a very nice fellow from the outlook. He told me, you know, I'm going to die like him. Very persuasive and very sharp. 